Hello guys, what's up again? My name is Sir B and I'm back to discuss about a new lesson which is all about strain. Again, regards sa aking mga kasamahan na sina Sir Jake and Sir Ephil for preparing this PowerPoint and modules. So let's get started! So let's proceed with the next slide. Okay, analysis of strain. So what do we mean by the word strain? The strain is the ratio of the change in length caused by the applied force to the original length. So we have here a diagram kung saan meron kang rad which is rigidly fixed sa ating wall. So, given naman sa ating illustration, you have here, ang ko lang ang aking pointer. So, you have here a rod which is fixed at a wall with a length of L and having a cross-sectional area denoted by A. So, meron kang circular rod. So, with the applied load P, Ayan. Nagkaroon ka ng deformation dito. Ayan. As you can see in the diagram. So, with the applied load P, humaba yung ating rad at a certain deformation denoted by the symbol delta. O yung tawag namin dyan noon, bulate. Para siyang shape ng isang bulate. Anyway, so again, the strain is given by the equation. So, ang Symbol mo for strain is denoted by epsilon. O yung pinasosyal na letter E. Pwede mo rin sabihin na abaligtad na letter 3. <laughs> na letter. So, pwede mo rin sabihin na pinaligtad na number 3. Okay? So that is just the ratio of the change in length denoted by delta over the original length. So kung ganyan ang kanyang Kung ganyan ang kanyang equation, therefore, this this strain is... So, siya ay unitless kasi yung ating ating... Kasi yung ating change in length, so ang unit niyan is in terms of a distance. So, maring meter, mm, inches, feet, etc. So, as for the length, ano? So, that is a unitless. Okay, so now, let's discuss the Hooke's Law. So, ito si Robert Hooke. So, siya yung naka-invento ng Hooke's Law. So, meron kayong dapat sisihin, si Robert Hooke yun. Ayaw mo sa akin, sasaktan. Okay, so, elastic materials, such as rubber band, plastic materials, chewing gum, and ductile materials, such as steel, have high values of strain, which brittle materials, like concrete and glass, have low values of strain which is tama naman ano kasi itong huli malulutong yan like the concrete and glass so kung meron man siyang uh, strain napakaliit lang nito kasi ang tendency niya nga brittle madali siyang mabasag unlike do sa ating mga elastic materials plastic materials and ductile materials so malaki yung value ng kanyang strain kasi sila is elastic ano or they can uh, change in length with a high value of P at the same time uh, with temperature. Ano? So later on, we'll discuss that in the temperature. But now, let's proceed with the next slide. So what is the stress and strain diagram? So by the term, it, by the term itself, this is a diagram which is respect with the stress. So acting along the Y and strain which is acting along the X axis. Okay, so ito merong iba't ibang stages do sa ating uh, stress and strain diagram. So uunahin natin yung proportional limit. So what is the proportional limit? 
So the stress and strain curve is a straight line. So guys, ito is yung ating straight line. So sa diagram, from here up to here, kung saan straight yung ating line, that is the proportional limit. So from the term itself, proportional. So ibig sabihin yan, kung ano man yung changes mo, do sa stress mo, has a corresponding change with respect dun sa strain. Okay? So again, ang ating stress, that is just equals to P over A. So meron kinalaman yung P o yung load, actual load. And yung strain, anong nga ulit si strain? So that is the ratio between the change in length over the total or the original length ng ating object na ina-analyze. Okay? So again, for the stress, yung P. For the strain, that is the deformation or the change in length. So sinasabi lang dyan, ayan nga. So yung ating stress is directly proportional dun sa strain, which is correct naman, di ba? So dito lang, coming from zero, so pagtaas niya, paglaki ng value. Kasi kung iisipin mo mabuti, di ba, habang lumalaki yung force na ina-applied mo, ano mangyayari? May mas tendency na humaba yung iyong, o magkaroon ng mas malaking elongation yung iyong material. So with that, yung stress will be equals to K. With that proportionality, ito yung magiging equation mo. Magkakaroon ka ng constant K. Kung saan yung constant K? So that K is called the modulus of elasticity or the Young modulus. So ang kanyang symbol is denoted by the symbol capital letter E. So guys, huwag kang alimutan itong modulus of elasticity kasi maraming beses pa kayo magkikita niyang dalawang yan. Okay, so again, yung E is either called modulus of elasticity or the Young modulus. Okay, so with that K, so uh, substitute natin yung value ng E, so yung equation mo is magiging ganito. Where stress is equals to E or the modulus of elasticity multiplied by the strain. Next, so what is the elastic limit? So, basahin natin ang definition niya. So, the elastic limit is the limit beyond which the material will no longer go back to its original shape. Okay guys, so do, during do sa ating proportional limit, if your object is subjected to that, pag inalis mo kasi yung load, babalik, babalik siya dun sa iyong original length. Ano? But, during the elastic limit, so sinabi dyan, the material will no longer go back to its original shape when the load is removed or it is the maximum stress that may be developed such that there is no permanent or residual deformation when the load is entirely removed next slide so we have this thing called yield point the ultimate strength and the rupture strength so let's define what is the yield point so basahin natin guys, yield point is the point at which the material will have an appreciable elongation or yielding without any increase in load. So ibig sabihin niya lang, at this point dun sa yield point natin, so I hope kita dun sa ating diagram. So mapapansin nyo dyan guys, yung uh, line kasi niyan is almost horizontal na. Ibig sabihin niyan, Sa kaunting load na i-apply mo, magkakaroon ka ng malaking deformation. So, kaya ka tinawag na yield point. Again, basahin natin. This is the point at which the material will have an appreciable elongation without any increase in load. So, doon sa kaunting pagbabago ng load mo, malaki yung nagiging deformation. Ano? So, that is our yield point. Next, the ultimate strength. So from the term itself, this is the maximum ordinate in the stress and strain diagram. It is the ultimate strength or the tensile strength. So ito, so diagram natin, that is the ultimate strength or yung peak sa ating diagram. And last will be our rupture strength. What is the rupture strength? So the rupture strength is defined as the strength of the material at rupture. So this is also known as the breaking strength. So ito guys, yung point at which yung iyong rad ay mapuputol na. So saan ba natin makikita itong stress and strain diagram? So meron kasi tayong tinatawag na tensile test. Ito na experience ko sa abroad. Yung bakal mo kasi meron kang machine na pinagsasalangan yan. So 
papakita ko sa inyo. Mag-attach ako ng video. Ayan. So, during those tests, ang ginagawa mo kasi dyan, binabanat mo yung iyong rad. Meron kang machine na pang test nyan. So, uh, tanda ko before, meron tayo nyan sa ating laboratory. Ano? So, dyan, meron kang scale dyan na makikita mo yung iyong stress na ina-applied. And then, yung iyong deformation. So, masusukat mo naman siya. Ano? So, dyan, nanggaling yung ating stress and strain diagram. So, yung stress mo, sa so kulang stress, meron siyang equivalent strain. Ano? So, yan, i-compute mo lang, and then i-plot-plot mo. So, mapapalabas mo itong iyong stress and strain diagram. So, I hope nagkakaroon kayo ng idea, no, about dito sa stress and strain diagram. Oh my God! Wow! Okay, aside from that, we have the modulus of resilience. So, ano ba yung modulus of resilience? So, it is the work done on a unit volume of material as the force is gradually increased from zero or from O to elastic limit point. This may be calculated as the area under the stress and strain curve from the origin O to up to the elastic limit E. The shaded area and the figure. So dito sa diagram natin, yung area daw nito, that is the modulus of resilience. And we also have this, yung tinatawag the modulus of toughness. So what is the modulus of that toughness? This is the work done on a unit volume of material as the force is gradually increased from zero to rupture point. This may be calculated as the area under the, under the entire stress and strain diagram. So ito yung kabuang area nito. Ano? So that is the modulus of toughness okay so let's proceed with the next discussion now we will discuss what is axial deformation so I define natin yung deformation we have this axial deformation so this is defined as the deformation is within the axis of the length of the given body so for example meron ka ditong suspended rod so with the applied load P, ayan, so makikita mo magkakaroon ka dito ng deformation or axial deformation. So nag-elongate yung ating rod at a certain length, denoted by delta. Next, we have the shearing deformation. So ito naman yung may kinalaman sa shearing. The deformation forms when there is a change in an angle of a body subjected to shear force. Kung maaalala nyo, di ba yung ating shear force is directly parallel dun sa ating cross-sectional area. So, ang tendency nyan, di ba, nag slide siya. So, dito sa second diagram, kung mapapansin nyo, tumabingi siya. Ano? So, yung actual deformation mo is ito. Okay, so later on naman, didiscuss naman natin yan. Okay. Okay, so... I-derive natin kung saan ang galing yung equation for axial deformation. Again, kung maalala nyo, di ba ito yung ating Hooke's Law? Kung saan, sabi nga, yung stress is directly proportional dun sa iyong strain. And then from that proportionality, nagkaroon tayo ng constant K. Kung saan yung K is equals dun sa yang modulus of elasticity na E. Okay, so kung maaalala, ano nga yung ating equation ulit for stress? Ang walang kamatayan na T over A. And yung strain natin, ano nga ulit ang equation nito? So di ba, from the first slide, that is the ratio between the change in length or the deformation over the original length. Okay, so ayan. And sa kabila, ayan. So with that, substitute natin sa original equation. Now our equation will be P over A is equals to E multiplied by delta over L. So with that, when we, we, we are going to solve for the actual deformation or delta or the change in length, the equation will be equals to P L all over A E. So tandaan na lang, palatandaan namin dito is plae. So the deformation is equals to plae. 
PL all over AE. So please memorize this equation and yun therefore yung ating derivation. So baka lang naman lumabas sa exam. Okay. Next. If, however, the cross-sectional area is not uniform, when we say uniform, magkaiba yung area niya do sa isang dulo at kabilang dulo. So, ano ba yung equation na gagamitin? The actual deformation can be determined by considering a differential length and applying integration. Ayan na. So, mahaluan tayo ng integral. No! So, I God, hope please, anda pa ito no! naman no! yung basic lang naman ng integral. Pero pa-review na din. Ano? So, considering this diagram, kung mapapansin nyo, dito sa isang dulo, medyo mas malapad siya compare dito sa kabila. So, mangyayari lang, kukuha ka ng strip, kagaya ng ginagawa natin sa integral. ba So, yung area ng strip mo, so itong E yung horizontal, itong baba, that is considered as dx. From where, yung E yung height, so, i-denote natin siya as distance y. So, ito yun. Ito yung strip, ha? And then, coming from the left end, papunta doon sa strip, that will be denoted as distance x. Okay? So, ito yung magbabago. Okay, so when we apply the equation, so the formation or the delta is equals to p over e integral of dx all over a. With the limits of 0, so yung isang dulong yun, papunta doon sa kabilang dulo, which is at a distance, L. Where A, so A naman, binigay dyan, ito yung area ng strip. So that is equal to T multiplied by Y. And Y and T, if variable, must be expressed in terms of X. So di ba yung goal natin dito, yung Y is papalta natin ng value in terms of x. Ano? So, ano mangyayari dito? Tama. So, para ma-relate mo yung x, kailangan mo mag ratio and proportion or similar triangle. So, later on, sa mga susunod na slides, sa mga example problems natin, magbibigay ako ng isang example nito para mas maunawaan nyo. Okay? Okay, so that ends our discussion. So, mag-try tayo mag-solve ng mga problem.